Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. This is the weekly chart of the Argentine peso provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below. Now, this type of devaluation was inevitable. The government of Argentina is essentially a socialist government that is a complete disaster and they've been experimenting with capital controls and all sorts of nonsense. You can see from the parabolic type of rise that this was going to happen. Now, we'll see in the article I'm going to cite next that the black market rate for the peso was actually around 12. So there's a long way to go and there's a lot of pain to be suffered by the Argentinian people. Unfortunately, probably a lot of them have not protected themselves with gold, silver, and Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. Things that aren't manipulated or devalued by their government. So, we'll get to that article in a second, but I wanted to take a look at the stock market. Now, we actually closed on the lows today. I don't think it's a coincidence that we have the Illuminati, we'll say, meeting in Davos. And I think that probably the people involved are front running what's going on. Anytime you see a close at the low, you know you're going to have a big down date. Now, that rule can be violated because the powers that be have have stepped in in the past and violated that rule but for the most part a close at the very lows of the day indicate and you can see it's as low as you can possibly get indicate a dramatically lower opening on the next day so let's pull up the Dow gold cross chart because that's one that I've been following for a long time and it's one that I've been saying is going to revert back to the mean and that's going to be a very serious reversion when that happens. So this is the gold Dow cross and you can see here that gold is still in a rallying phase the Dow of course is coming down fairly hard and this may be a type of deflation scare but I don't think so I think it's actually something else I think we're looking at a sea change if you remember when I covered the speech by Christine Lagarde and the witchcraft that she talked about there's something seriously going to happen in 2014 and this may be the people who are beginning to front run it. I honestly believe that these two are going to meet up. I don't believe or I don't know whether the Dow is going to go higher and gold's going to catch up or whether the Dow's going to drastically drop and gold will go down a little but I do believe these two are going to come back and meet at some point and you can see that the divergence in them is very very dramatic it's something that that ultimately will be corrected so let's look at the Argentine issue here this is an article from fxstreet.com after yesterday's major sell-off in the Argentine peso, the Argentine authorities today announced easing currency restrictions and capital controls, allowing dollar purchases which have been strictly limited in recent years. We expect the peso to come under further serious pressure as the official peso rate is significantly stronger than the black market rate. Hence, in our view, USD slash ARS should spike to close to the level of the, of the black market. The official USD ARS is around 8, while the black market is around 12. 
the decision to ease capital and currency controls simply reflects the central bank having run out of options. It is very clear that the central bank's significant inflationary policies are the real reason the peso has been in a free fall on the black market over the past couple of years. Inflation is likely to be well above 30%, well above the official inflation data. Furthermore, the central bank has been running out of foreign currency reserves. Now that's the key there, and that's what we're going to see. If you haven't heard the latest Lindsey Williams, I think it's actually from December, but he's talking about how the insiders have said that there's going to be a global currency reset. I think that Christine Lagarde hinted at that with her her number seven speech that she gave and I think that's probably going to happen this year basically to summarize what Lindsay Williams said is that all of the currencies of the nations of the world are going to be revalued based upon the assets of those nations now it depends on what is considered to be an asset if they considered the US stock market and bond market as our assets and of course then the US currency would be probably not be devalued but it seems like they're going to be looking at hard assets or real assets and maybe even subtracting debt so if that happens then there's going to be serious implications for the US dollar. So looking at what happened in Argentina, we can see that currency controls and cap capital controls simply don't work. And ultimately, the market is going to win out. Ultimately, the government has to fold. And that's pretty much what has happened in Argentina. It's been coming for the for a very long time. They've been fighting the inevitable and that's what happens when you have a socialist country. You tell all the peasants or even the middle class that's what's happening in America that the government's going to take care of everybody but of course the government doesn't have an infinite amount of money the government only has the money it can tax from people and when the government can't tax enough money then it begins to print the money and then you get a currency collapse that's what's happening in Argentina so this is again proof that markets are more powerful than governments certainly more powerful than the government of Argentina and I think that we're gonna find that it is that markets are more powerful than the United States government very very soon here. Now I wanted to go into questions. We're going to move the user questions forum over to the member forum. I'm in the process of populating everyone's login on the member forum uh, and password so we're going to move the user questions over to the member forum and close it on the public forum. The main reason for that is because people who are members should be able to ask their questions, get them answered after all they're paying for that. So I wanted to answer a question here that's on this last update that I posted publicly, the Eagle Rationing video. And this is from Save Our Savings who says, why are so many people hell-bent on stacking U.S. Eagles despite high premiums and or shortages? What's wrong with generic silver rounds as long as you can prove it's not a fake? So that kind of begs the question there. The, the reason is that U.S. Silver Eagles are US currency they actually have a dollar denomination printed on them and what that means is that when you counterfeit a silver eagle you are actually counterfeiting 
US currency and that means that you have the Secret Service on your tail you have the Treasury coming after you and although I'm not in total agreement with Bix Weir I do believe there are some good guys in the government and I'm willing to speculate that that the good guys were behind the Silver Eagle program I believe it was Ron Paul who was instrumental in getting that introduced in 1986 so that's a big reason why people buy Silver Eagles because there's a lot of law enforcing the counterfeiting of silver eagles as opposed to rounds silver rounds you really don't have any recourse uh, if someone counterfeits a silver round there's not much you can do it, it's uh, caveat emptor uh, let the buyer beware if you have a fake round there's not a lot you're gonna do so that's the main reason on that I want to get over to the rest of the questions before I retire the public user questions this one's from egg de scrambler and he asks hi brother John F with the exchanges being the entry and exit point to and from Bitcoin while those bitcoins are on the exchanges they can run fractional reserve on those paper bitcoins just as we have with silver you also need to debunk these claims below from Gonzalo Lira so uh, those two articles are they're not bitcoin bashing but they're clarifications uh, I've dealt with most of the objections that are in those but this question about whether these Bitcoin exchanges can manipulate the price of Bitcoin yes it's possible and a lot of people have speculated actually that Mt. Gox who is now becoming less and less important because the volume on the other exchanges is actually exceeding that on Mt. Gox yes they could in theory short Bitcoins by using the coins that they have or they say they have selling them down and uh, suppressing the price doing that it's much more difficult for that to happen in Bitcoin because there's always a potential chance there could be a run on the exchange now they have the longest lag time to get coins on the off of their exchange and I think that that's the reason why they're decreasing in volume so those two are directly related to each other the time it takes to get your assets off of an exchange and the amount of capital that goes on to an exchange so again this is a way that markets control these things the best thing for Bitcoin is for many many exchanges to open the best thing in any market of course is competition so we want to see competition amongst exchanges I think that's what we're actually seeing so no I don't think that they can successfully short Bitcoin the way they've shorted silver you have to remember that the silver manipulation is run by the LBMA the COMEX and people in charge of the government in London and the government in America they use the laws of those nations and they corrupt the regulators and they manipulate the exchanges and create fake markets I don't think the the same potential is there in Bitcoin and I think that the diversification of exchanges is going to run away from them so fast that it's not going to be possible for the silver manipulation to be emulated in Bitcoin next question is from tinfoil hat dude and he asks brother John hope all is well with you and your family thank you for following the trends and continuing to post your silver updates everyone seems to think the Federal Reserve has rehypothecated United States gold holdings over and over and over and then sold the physical on the open market to quell demand and price I've got one question 
Who's to say the Federal Reserve has not distributed the United States physical gold to the owners of the Fed? Since only the owners know who actually owns the Fed, who's to say the share owners didn't distribute the gold to themselves, i.e. the Rothschilds, Browns, Morgans, Lazards, Rockefellers, Warburgs, etc.? Would like to know your thoughts on the matter. Maybe I'm overthinking best regards. Well, I definitely agree on that. I don't think there's much doubt about the fact that the U.S. Fed has rehypothecated the gold they had. I think that the time schedule that they have to get the German gold back, they haven't even been able to keep up with their slow seven-year time schedule. They're actually running behind. That pretty much indicates that they they don't have the gold they have to either buy it on the open market which will be a problem because they have to put up the price or get it from the miners which is also a problem because if you listen to the latest interview on Eric King uh, with Andrew McGuire he talks about how the Chinese are doing an end run around the bullion banks ability to get gold from the miners and that the Chinese are willing to buy gold directly from the miners for the uh, Hong Kong spot price, which is much higher. So, yes, I agree that the United States has rehypothecated its gold. And the question is, uh, why haven't they just distributed to the owners of the Fed? Well, maybe they have. Uh, maybe their goal is to collapse the Fed. The Fed's balance sheet is filled up with toxic trash. If you listen to the latest Jim Rickards interview, he believes that the Federal Reserve could very well go bankrupt, and that might be part of their plan. They might take down the United States and its Federal Reserve at the same time. So you very well could be correct on that. Next question from Timmons4, that's about the German repatriation. Talked a little bit about that already. If China is able to obtain 2,000 plus tons of gold annually from the West, why, if it is available, does the U.S. not just purchase 300 tons on the same market that China is drawing from? Well, you have to understand that China first of all China is not exporting China is actually the largest gold miner in the world but they're not exporting any of that they're actually importing the other amounts of gold that are mined by the, all the other countries and they're using their forex dollar reserves to do that so I think that it's clear that China has the intent to accumulate as much gold as at the lowest price they possibly can to end up winning this game clearly China believes that gold is going to play a very large role in the next economic world paradigm I believe so as well I believe that China is right and the US is wrong now why doesn't the US just purchase the 300 tons well I think it's pretty clear that they don't want to put the price up on themselves. It's the LBMA and the COMEX. It's London and the United States that are running this gold scam of suppressing the price of gold. If they went and turned around and bought the gold, then they'd do the opposite of what they're trying to do. They'd raise the price on themselves. I think a more important question is, why doesn't Germany just go to the LBMA and purchase the amount of gold that the Fed owes them and be done with it because they could easily do that but they're waiting for the Fed to ship this gold that in my opinion doesn't exist so that's a much more important question uh, the Germans could easily go somewhere else and buy the gold and take delivery my guess is the gold's not in London as well and we've covered that before and last question from Miojo. How much is silver worth part they? So people who point out a replay of Solomon's silver policies occurring again can't possibly be Christians themselves. 
So silver became as stones after Solomon's reign, not during. So why is the next silver as stone after Babylon's fall? Is there any way that God would allow Babylon's rise to push silver down just as Solomon's rise did? Do I think that silver is worthless because Solomon was able to make its value as that of stone? I'll leave it to you, Brother Jay. I'll, I guess I'll, I will take hindsight for us to see how the other knew the answer. So, a little bit cryptic there. I think what he's getting at is, if you remember when I did the Silver in Scripture series and I talked about the amount of gold and silver that was accumulated for the building of the temple it doesn't mean that when it says that silver was so common it was common as stone or it was another verse says it was accounted as nothing it doesn't mean that it doesn't have value it means that Israel was so rich at that time that it had so much of the world's gold and so much of the world's silver that there was no point in even counting the silver. Now, of course, that silver would be very valuable to another nation, and it was. It just it just means that Israel was that rich. So, how is that different today in what we're looking at in our markets? Well, in Solomon's day, when they accumulated silver, it was obviously money at that time. It's very clear that gold and silver were money. But, they were refashioning the gold and the silver for the temple and they were actually using them for uses but you have to remember that when the temple was sacked and it was carried off large amounts of gold and silver were carried off to Babylon and ultimately returned but none of the silver and none of the gold was lost now the gold that was in that temple, we don't know the exact history of how it moved or where it went, but we do know that pretty much all of the gold that's ever been mined, except for some that's sitting at the bottom of the seafloor, is still with us today. Now, that's not the case with silver, because in the mid-40s and late 40s, the type of industrial change occurred where silver became such a useful industrial commodity that it was in the interest of the central banks as well as in their interest to manipulate the bimetal market to demonetize silver. Now since that time with silver being demonetized it has been wasted. It has been thrown away in landfills because its price was not allowed to rise in the normal way and in its relationship with gold. You can see even today, I don't know what the quote is, but it's roughly 50 to 60 to 1 on the gold-silver ratio. Far, far beyond any normal ratio, which some people would say would be 10 or 16 to 1. So, ever since that point in time, after the United States accumulated the vast majority of the world's silver and then demonetized it, that silver has been used up. So the silver that was accumulated by Solomon was not used up. It's just that Solomon had so much of the world's silver that it, it wasn't even worth counting. He had so much. doesn't mean it wasn't worth anything. It just meant that they were so wealthy that it wasn't worth counting the silver. It was just worth counting the gold. Now, most of the silver that was accumulated in Solomon's time has been wasted and thrown away and is gone while 99.9 .9 of the gold accumulated by Solomon is still with us today and is hoarded by central banks and I suspect getting back to the other question that it is not the Federal Reserve that has that gold it's the Bank uh, of China and uh, Germany would like some but probably Indians and others so the gold still with us silver is gone and that's one of the reasons why silver is a much more potentially explosive market than gold is so back to the chart I'm expecting that 
paper markets are going to correct and they're going to correct severely these will come back and meet and it would not surprise me to see stocks actually return to the lows that we had when Obama was elected or even lower you have to remember that it's going to be very difficult for the central planners who are running things to convince people to allow them to take over management of their retirement accounts without having a tremendous drop in the stock market because if they try to make the argument that the legislature should take over for people because uh, they can't manage their own money then people will just simply cite the fact that well that doesn't make sense look how much we're up we're up pulling it back to the weekly here we're up from about 6,500 on the Dow to about 15,000 so we've already more than doubled our money why would you say we can't manage our own money the only way they can make the argument that people can't manage their own money is for stocks and bonds to do something like this which is actually quite possible if you look at the last financial crisis we did have a drastic decline uh, if you look at the one minute chart as I pointed out it appears we're at the beginning of a drastic decline in the stock market and the fact that all of the muckety mucks are meeting in Davos I think they're probably all now front running each other to get out of the paper markets the writing is on the wall they're ready to collapse things and that's probably going to be when they introduce the confiscation of the retirement accounts so it's not too late but it's soon going to be too late to get your money out of paper assets out of debts and get the, get it into gold silver and the cryptocurrencies and we'll talk to you next time